Hello, everybody. My name is Jacob Bartleson. I'm a news reporter with Shaw Media Illinois. And today I'm joined by a former friend of ours at Shaw Media, a good friend of ours here, Sherry Wilcox. She is the executive director of Batavia Main Street. And she's going to be joining us today to discuss the latest as Batavia moves into phase three of the Restore Illinois plan, uh, what the restaurants are going to be looking like, the farmer's market, and other things like that. So, Sherry, just formally, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know it's been busy for you. Oh, no problem at all. We we love getting the word out, and, uh, you know, Shaw is close to my heart, so. Sure. Well, I'm glad you could join us. So, you know, Sherry, just to start things off here, phase three, I think, as everybody knows, is going to be rolling in here very shortly. Gatherings of 10 or more people are going to be allowed. The state parks are going to be opening up. Um, Non-essential retail is, is going to be opening up as well, which I'm sure there's a lot of people in Batavia very excited about that. If we could start with restaurants first, though, I think sure. that's, at least that's what I think probably most people are really excited about is to be able to go out and enjoy themselves. So obviously with the limited outdoor seating that's going to be in place, how has Batavia Main Street been helping people and, and businesses prepare for something like this? Because there are some restaurants out there that they don't, they have to kind of create space and maybe go out in a parking lot and all that stuff. Right, right. So, so downtown Batavia is a mix, you know, we're a historic downtown and, and some of our restaurants have a uh, parking lot space that they can expand into and, and our city uh, has allowed for um, a lot of those restaurants to utilize some parking lot space if their landlords are cool with it. Um, and there's guidelines for that. And a lot of those are expanding into that space, you know, to create a larger area for outdoor dining. Um, in addition to that, though, we have a lot of restaurants that, that just have street parking or, you know, most people utilize the parking garage and they don't really have that expansive space um, at their at their restaurant location. Probably the best example of this is, is North River Street, um, where we have a variety of restaurants either on the street or in the contiguous buildings there that don't really have a lot of outdoor access of their own. So uh, the city in cooperation with the Chamber and Main Street and the Park District um, have been working together this week to set up an area on River Street with, with public access picnic tables so that uh, people can go to these restaurants and get their carry out and they don't have to go home. There's tables available for them to sit at and, and, and enjoy their meal. Um, you know, social distancing is still there. We're spreading the tables out, you know, eight feet. Um, the, the groups will be small, but it gives sort of an added expanse of outdoor space that all those restaurants uh, can utilize. And what's nice about it is they can continue to do their regular carry out or curbside service um, without having to try to staff a serviced patio, which many of them aren't in a position to do yet. You know, this is just beginning. And they've taken such a hit financially that um, this is a way to give them some more outdoor space that they can share and that our public can enjoy um, without, a, without a cost to them. Sure. So is there any general advice from Batavia Main Street if, if I'm just a, a normal person going out uh, pretty soon? Just general advice for, you know, beyond the health guidelines that I think everybody knows, just with the area in general. You mentioned the parking is going to be interesting as, as restaurants are figuring all this out. Is there just general guidance from Batavia Main Street on anything? You know, like that? everybody has slightly different rules um, and there's going to be uh, different guidelines based on the business you go into, you know, it says five people per thousand square feet, I think in retail locations and all of our retail locations are a different size. And, and you know, so we ask for patience, obviously. Um, everybody's trying to do everything that they can do to keep people safe. Uh, we actually have a, a reopening pledge that we're gonna offer up to businesses that they can sign on to and, and post a sticker in their window so that people know that they've committed to, to everything in that, in that list for, for safe reopening. But what I've been saying personally out of Main Street is the most important thing to do is cover your faces, wait your turn, and spread your support. And, and that's really, that's the most of it. Yes, there's gonna be little intricacies. Some of our salons, you know, salons are doing things by appointment. Some of our retail stores are choosing not to not to open yet at this time beyond the curbside. Um, 
you know, others are doing things out on the sidewalk. There's a lot of variety, but just for the most part, you know, be courteous, be patient, and uh, come out and support those businesses because they need your help. On top of that, uh, the farmer's market has been getting a lot of uh, attention, you know, just on social media as that's going to be opening up. It's the 25th year. Um, you know, there's a variety of vendors that are going to be out. So what's the enthusiasm uh, about the farmer's market finally opening up and, and the opportunities that that will bring? You know, I, we've gotten so much positive feedback about the farmer's market. And that's another thing that we've had to look at uh, guidelines that were offered up to us by the Illinois Farmers Market Association and approved by the Department of Health uh, for things that we can do to keep that market safe and accessible and a happy, healthy place for everybody. Um, and that's what we're doing. The most significant is uh, the market is going to be predominantly down one side of the street instead of two to allow for more distancing. Uh, we're going to utilize the, the parking lot off of um, state and river for more space um, and again in a zipper format so that people can have plenty of room to stand in line, plenty of room to, to take a look. There's going to be sanitizer available on every table. Everybody's going to be, you know, covering their face. Um, we've asked, you know, bring, leave your pets at home. Really that's just for space consideration. We want to make sure as many people can enjoy the market as possible at a safe and social distance. So little things like that. Um, there will be food provided as there has been every year. We're just asking people to eat it off site or in the picnic area. Uh, so I think that most of the guidelines that are put in place aren't too intrusive um, on folks. And, you know, they're really, we want to be able to be open. We want to be able to offer this to the community. There's so little that we're going to be able to offer in terms of events the traditional events that we, we have in town. And the farmer's market is essential. So it's one of those things that we're able to offer every week. We want to continue to be able to offer it and to continue to have people come and enjoy it. And the only way we're gonna be able to do that is, is if we all do our part. And if I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be opening up on Saturday from eight yes. to noon. Okay. Yep. It'll be every Saturday from eight to noon from now until Halloween. So. Fantastic. So lots of opportunities for people uh, to right. enjoy that. And, and obviously, and go ahead. It, the guidelines may change. In fact, right. I'm That's sure exactly they're going to say. change throughout the year. And, and we'll keep people updated on it. So, so where we are at today may not be where we're at by 4th of July. And, you know, we're, we're flexible and we're fluid and we'll work with that. We have almost 40 vendors and they're really excited. You know, these, this is an essential business for so many people but it's also essential for those vendors who depend on farmer's market income to survive. You know, we talk a lot at Batavia Main Street um, and at the city level about our brick and mortars, but our community extends beyond those brick and mortars. And it, it, it involves a lot of uh, local farmers and vendors and artisans and, and, and flower growers. And, and this is their lifeblood as well. So we're happy to be able to provide that in a safe, healthy, happy way. In terms of uh, the boardwalk shops, um, is there anything to, to add about that um, as, as things get rolling here? Yeah, so we should have a couple of the shops finished being built this week and the rest next week. Um, we're looking at a mid-June opening. Uh, we have vendors who are very excited. Some of the vendors have even come out and helped uh, get their shops get their shops finished and ready. And and uh, Bob Hansen, who, who's on our board, he's the owner of Funway, has really spearheaded the project, the building project, and, and we owe him a great uh, gratitude for that. And lots of excitement. You know, it's, it's a new retail sector for us, and it's fun, and it's kitschy, and everybody's really looking forward to, I think, getting out again and having something to be excited about. These last few months have been so hard because that, there's been so little to feel positive about. And as the numbers hold or go down and we're able to, to congregate a little bit more, to come out of our homes, to visit these businesses and neighbors who we've missed for so long, um, I think you're gonna see spirits rise. I know another positive and, and popular aspect of, of Main Street is, is your second Fridays. Um, and I know you have a, a pretty cool event coming up on June 12th uh, for that online event. Is there anything to share uh, in anticipation of that? So, you know, we launched second Fridays this year online. 
and we did it last month. And, and we had so many great businesses participate with unique ideas. We had, you know, everything from, from music and, and lecture and discussion to, to fitness classes and yoga and uh, sneak peeks at new businesses. And I'm excited for the same here in June. Um, we are going to keep the June event online again um, with all the restrictions to the numbers of people who can come in and out of businesses right now. We didn't want to give people false hope and have our businesses have to deal with sort of a surge in, in their doorway. So we are going to keep it um, this month online, but I would look for the rest of the season to sort of phase where it's both online and live on the street. And that way people who want to stay home and participate that way can do so. And people who want to, you know, stop out and visit will be able to as well. So again, just another fluid option. But uh, Second Fridays is a great thing. It allows people to find the, the treasures in their own neighborhood and, and maybe discover some, some restaurants or some businesses that, that are new or that maybe they're just new to them and they hadn't realized they were there before. Well, a lot of great stuff coming up from you guys. Sherry, uh, as we wrap up here, is there anything in additional for the public to know or uh, that Main Street would like people to know just in anticipation of the next couple of weeks? Obviously, information is fluid. Circumstances may change, but uh, sure. anything else just to be aware of? You know, we've had, we've had such great support from our community, and, and I would just ask that, you know, everybody considers, yes, this is a reopening. It's an exciting time. But, but be patient, not only be patient with each other, but be patient with our business owners. You know, they've been, they've been struggling for a long time now and, and this is exciting for them, but there's a lot more regulations. There's a lot of things that they have to do and abide by and they wanna keep themselves safe and they wanna keep their staff safe. Um, and I would just ask for everybody to be, you know, patient with it and take your time and wait your turn. And like I said, cover your face, wait your turn and uh, spread your support throughout the community. Well, Sherry, a lot of great stuff coming up from you guys. Thanks so much for carving some time out on your busy schedule. I know you've been coordinating with a lot of different people over the last uh, number of weeks. So uh, we really appreciate your time. Absolutely. We'll see you in Batavia. Sounds good.